I do a wall racing activity with kids all the time and I've often thought, is there a better way to do this? Kids' cars are pretty good, we have some exciting races, but can we get back faster and more accurately? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this car and how I coded it and also how I added some cogs to make it go even faster. To start with, I just built a robot like I normally built one. I wanted to just build a simple robot with two motors and two wheels. I placed the motors towards the middle of the robot so it would turn easily. And then I attached the wheels. I like to be, make sure that the wheels are secured strongly by adding axles and pins and then pieces on the outside to keep it secure. So I added the wheels to the motors and they're kind of in the middle. Then I had to put the hub on. And I noticed that when I put the hub on, it's definitely going to be heavy at one end, but that's okay, because then it's easy to work out where you want to stick the ball and socket. So after I put the hub on, I got out the ball and socket. I always add beams to make things uh, more secure, and also sometimes to center things. You want to have the ball and socket in the middle. In fact, your whole, you want the whole robot to be completely symmetrical, because if it's symmetrical, it's going to go straighter. So I make it nice and strong by adding a few more beams to keep it all together nicely. I always emphasize to the kids, build your robot as strong as you can. You don't want to be fixing it in between races and things. You want it to be secure and strong. If it is built well, then it will be likely to go straighter. I added the button or the sensor, the force sensor, by using these attachments because they can allow you to have a bit of a bend and, and that would make the button face upwards and hit the wall a bit straighter. I always plug the button into B and the sensors in, uh, the motors into C and D when I'm building it, and it's almost right to go. Before we code this little beauty, we're going to put down a line on the floor, just randomly place it, and as it, and we're going to have a, a wall that it needs to hit. And I just used a couple of planks for my plank battles exercises. Then I measured it. Uh, I don't usually get the kids to do this, but I thought I might as well measure this one. It was about 180 centimeters. So with the code, this is the whole code I use basically. Set the movement motors. Always have to set the movement motors where the movement motors are plugged in. And this block's really useful. It is uh, it tells the hub how big the wheels are. So this will make measuring a lot more accurate if you grab that block. If you're using big wheels, it has to be 27.6 centimeters. You can set the speed. I recommend about 80 percent and then you start moving straight. I use the wait until block and inside the wait until hexagon I put the, um, when B is pressed, made sure the button is always plugged into B. Made the speed about 30% to turn around because I think it should turn around slower and I make it go backwards before it turns around. So then I decided maybe it could just go backwards at a normal speed and then go slowly to turn around to make that a bit more accurate. So I started with this one second turn um, and I made that come back at about 80% and then I, that's where I put the 180 centimeters. A right 100 turn will make the robot spin. So make sure it says right 100. And you might adjust the speeds later. 80% is good. If it goes 100 or more, often it doesn't go straight. So let's test this out. The first time I tested it, it went backwards. And the quick way to fix that after my dog gave me some advice was to just swap the wires around. So if you swap the ports around from C and D, we swap the wires around, plug the motors into the opposite ports, then your motors always go the opposite direction. So that's a quick way to fix things. Swap the wires around, then it went forwards, and then when it hit the wall, it went backwards and it turned, but too much. So, oh, and then it went crazy. I'm going, what's going on here? And it didn't even go far enough because it turned so much it didn't make the distance. Sometimes it didn't turn enough, sometimes it turned too much. I decided to use a special block for if you go down the bottom left of the menu, you can choose extra blocks and you can get more movement blocks. And I chose the one about acceleration. I thought if it accelerates a bit more slowly, it might go more straight. So I put that one in there for medium at the start after the set the speed. And I also put another one in after the button was pressed and after the turn around, I thought it should accelerate a bit slower, slower again. But to tell you the truth, it didn't really make that much difference. But it does look pretty cool. The code was looking pretty good, but I did have to adjust the number of seconds that it turned around. And I did have to adjust things like the speed. So I thought I might experiment with this and make it less than a second. And to start with, I might make it 0.7 of a second because it was turning way too much at one stage. And I thought it was turning pretty slowly as well, but we fixed it up later. So this seemed to work pretty well, but it, uh, yeah pretty good but it wasn't that fast not much faster than the kids 
Now I did experiment with the OR, which is experimenting with the gyro sensor, and I used this code to make it uh, try and turn at right angle, uh, 180 degrees, that sort of thing, but honestly it was a waste of time. Because it was going so fast, because it was hitting the wall, it wasn't working too good. So I went back to the original code and I thought, this is pretty good. But I wasn't quite satisfied. I thought I needed to make it a bit faster and a bit better. It's going pretty well. It's going nice and straight, hitting the wall, going around and coming back. But honestly, that wasn't much faster than the kids do at school. It was a little bit faster maybe, but not much. So I'm going to add some cogs and gears to make my wheels turn faster. But before I do, can I remind you that if you really want to help me out, you could join my channel. You could become a Robot Man fan. That's right. You could become a fan of Robot Man. And that would just inspire me to make more videos. So if you don't mind, if you want to, press join and you can um, become a member. Or you could just say thanks, a one-off thanks on all the videos is the thanks button. And you can decide if you want to make a donation. That'd be fantastic. So let's gear it up by adding those cogs. I put a little cog on the wheel and the big cog on the motor. And the big cog will make the little wheel spin really fast. Makes the little cog go really, really fast. So that makes the big wheel turn around. So, little cog on the wheel, big cog on the motor, and it's my setup to start with was a bit like this. Now, it's pretty ambitious to have such a big cog on a little cog, so we'd have to test it out, but it is printed really fast, and it looks exciting. Before we test it, we need to swap the cables around from C and D, because adding an extra cog makes the wheels turn the opposite way. So I tested this out, and when I did it, it went surprisingly to the left. I couldn't work out why. So I tried again and it went to the left again and when it came back it wasn't working properly at all. And I was thinking man this is dodgy as and I think it was a problem with the little cog not having enough strength to turn the wheels around especially after it stopped. So I decided that I might need to make some changes because it was just too unreliable. It was working a little bit sometimes but it wasn't going straight at all and it wasn't very good. So I thought I might compromise and not use the tiny little cog, but use one that was kind of a little bit bigger. The challenging thing with this is trying to get the cog to spin next to the other cog. So the good thing about Spike Prime that eventually as you can get all cogs to turn other cogs, eventually you can put them in the right position. If you add enough Lego, you can find a hole that will match the cogs. There is a lot of trial and error involved. And eventually you can hopefully get the cogs to line up. I actually decided I need more holes so I need to move these uh, motors down so the holes line up differently to the motors so I moved out of the pink beam and moved the motors down a bit and that gave me a little bit more room to play with and I figured that I might just be able to pop the cog in there and it kind of seemed to work okay it was a little bit of a tight fit but eventually it went in I had to make it so that it would so that it would uh, sit out a little bit because the motor itself sits out a little bit and the cog sits out even further so I added a little piece like this to the cog and then made it a uh, good distance away from the beam so that it would be engaged with the other cog and then I attached some small pieces on the inside and the outside to keep it in place it's always good to test it before you add the wheels to see if it's working okay and then I added the big wheels of course so once it's working okay, you add the big wheels and you've got to make sure they're not rubbing on the cogs or beams or anything. And once they're nice and secure, it's just about time to test it. So I pushed the button and it's looking like it's working pretty well. But I also wanted to make it a bit stronger because the cogs were had a lot of pressure on them. And they're pushing the wheels down, they're pushing the motors off. So I added some bars or some beams to the top and to the sides and in the front just to make it all hold together a lot more tightly and that way when it hits the wall it's not going to break and it's not going to be unreliable so you can never make it too strong put it on the line give it a test it was getting a little frustrating because it kept swearing, swerving to the left and then it wasn't working very well the, the gears were grinding and it wasn't coming back properly and I thought man I need to change the code I think because it's just not working properly so I, uh, after lots and trial, lots and lots of trial and error, I thought, man, I'm going to change this code a bit. So what I did is I, I decided to get rid of this block that made it go slowly when it turned around. 
got rid of that altogether. I just thought it's going to go the same speed the whole way, regardless. And also got rid of these ones that made it accelerate, because I didn't think they made much difference at all. So after I did all that, I changed a couple of the other numbers, made it go 90% speed. And whenever you use cogs, it definitely messes your distances up, so you might have to experiment with that like I did. Made it go just point, uh, six of a rotation. Whenever you do anything like this, you're going to have lots of trial and error. Your robot will be different to mine, no matter what you do. I obviously changed my code about 40 times, and I also had to change the construction of the robot. I don't know if you noticed, but originally when I made it, the um, wheels were behind, in front of the cogs, but I moved them down, so now that the wheels are behind the big cog, and that seemed to make things a lot more reliable. It was going faster backwards, so I thought I might swap it around. So I put the um, big... Uh, the small cog with the wheels behind the big cog in the motor and that seemed to give it a bit more stability and I also put something on the front of the robot so when it hits the wall at least it's going to straighten up a bit more so I made the button really big by putting those blocks on there so when it hits the wall it's going to go straighter and eventually you know what it worked really well let's try that again Wooshka. So, if you like this video, why not subscribe to my channel? And also, check out my other videos. <laughs> I have lots of fun with Spike Prime and a lot of my videos about Spike Prime. So check this playlist out of all my lessons and you might get some more inspiration.